Hello and welcome to episode 44 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. This is Melissa. Ooh. <laughs> Our second female guest. There's a trend going, huh? Yep. What's the trend? Wives. <laughs> Brad, Brad nodded with affirmation. <laughs> I tend to nod a lot on the podcast. And I, <laughs> oh, wait. There's no camera. Yeah, Jason Muse does that a lot. Not just nodding, but a lot of actions that Kevin Smith has to <laughs> announce on what he's doing. So, uh, with Melissa being here, we're not going to go on any treasure because we don't have any. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I sucked. So did Brad. He has a good excuse, though. He has training. So in, in lieu of the treasure, we're actually going to interview Melissa. We have a few questions that I just thought of about an hour ago. Nice. Because <laughs> I got to Brad's house. He's like, you have three questions? I said, no. I didn't know I was supposed to have any questions. I've told you like three times. <laughs> and Nick could attest to that. Was it via text? No, it was via podcast. I was like, you know, next week we're going to have Melissa on and Brandon will ask her a few questions. I'll ask her a few questions and maybe you're just doing the non thing, not listening. <laughs> Probably. It's it's even on the podcast. I could show it to you. I don't need you to show it to me. So you want to start asking your questions? You have any? You have some up. Yeah, I do. Go ahead. How did you and Nicholas meet? In high school... Duh. <laughs> in band class, I would think. Oh. What what did you play? I played the bass clarinet. Oh. Uh, and Nick played the saxophone. The baritone sax. Rhymes with sex. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Sounds like sex. <laughs> Rhymes with oh, sex. Yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my first question is, what is your favorite book? Um, gosh. I always go back to the one I read as a kid, and that's Matilda. Hmm. I didn't know that was a book. Mm-hmm. By Roald Dahl. I, I, knew, I knew it was a book. Same guy who wrote Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, okay. Brush up on your Roald Dahl. Yeah. <laughs> Did he do a sequel to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Like the great the glass? Gla the glass elevator, yeah. The glass yeah. elevator. Uh, James and the Giant Peach, he wrote that one, oh, too. Oh, yeah. I just always liked... She's a nerdy girl who likes books and has telepathic powers. It's fun. Does Nick do anything that mildly annoys you? Yes. <laughs> he he has a habit of throwing things around the house. <laughs> He'll throw me the remote. He'll toss me something or other. Drives me nuts. So what what was uh, one of your favorite childhood toys? We had this um, Nerf like soccer ball. And during the summers, we'd always go out. My uh, parents live in a court. And so we would always go out and uh, play kickball, and we would spend hours out there. So I always just loved that. We think that thing was falling apart by the, you know, I got older. Mm -hmm. I loved playing with that thing. Kickball's fun. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun. We'd spend hours out there doing that. Besides proposing to you, what's the biggest surprise Nick has ever done for you? Probably the ruse he did to throw me off of proposing. I like ruses. <laughs> <laughs> it was right after Christmas, and I was like driving by the mall to return something, and you told me you were going to errands, and you were driving the other way away from the mall, and uh, I asked you later why you were doing it, and you said something or other. And then on Valentine's Day, and we don't celebrate Valentine's Day, I came home from school, and you had like something from like Bath and Body Works or something there for me. I was like, you were making dinner. I was like, this is weird. <laughs> and then you later you explained why you did it because you had to explain why you were by the mall. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good ruse. <laughs> <clears throat> this is your top five, Brad. So you want to uh, explain what's going why on? Why is it my top five? Because you've been super excited to do it for like eighteen weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I think Nick has been too. I'm not the only one, and I know you have too. So not really. I'm the one, probably because I'm the one who created it. And like was talking about it, so we're gonna do top five Final Fantasy spells that are good for sexual activities. I did my list last night. 
I've thought about it for like four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> See, when I was thinking about it, all I could think of was one. It wasn't even that good. So I had to do some research. That's good. I'm glad you did. So we're going to roll the dice to see who goes first. I hope I don't get a high number again. This is Nick's. Seven. Mine. Fourteen. <laughs> Thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I guess I'm up first. My first one is going to have to be a combo attack. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be blind and harm from Final Fantasy 1. This is for the BDSM types. <laughs> <laughs> blind, so you don't have to mess with that silly blindfold and tie it on when you're in the heat of the moment. <laughs> like, this thing won't tie. So blind, just boom, instant blindness. She's already blindfolded. Harm, because you could go for harm one, which is a little light spanking. Harm two for, okay, let's get rough. Or all out for harm three, take that bitch. <laughs> So, so when you like use harm one, your hand isn't doing it. You it's the magic. So you say harm one, and it's like, Psh. yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> your hands are occupied with other things. So what if? Like, so can you focus it? Like wherever you look, that's where it's gonna harm. Yeah, oh, that's okay. how they do it in the video game. <laughs> I'm sure. So that was my number five. My number five was charm. You're not going to get all rapey on me, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just for those times when, you know, the other party member isn't in the mood. So you can just... <laughs> so just throw some charm down, and then they'll be in the mood. Awesome. Yeah, I don't have an elaborate story to go behind that, but that's what I have. Have you ever heard of a sex swing? Yes. I, I first saw one when I was... Uh... Recording in San Francisco with my band Dropstep, the guy that we were that was uh, recording us, he had one in his in his apartment, mm -hmm. and this was in San Francisco, like I said. So I mean, if you've ever been to San Francisco, the the living areas are pretty small, especially yeah. for people who don't have millions of dollars. And this sex wing took up like half of one of his very <laughs> small rooms, and he only had like two or three rooms. They're pretty big. Yeah. It took up a large portion of his house. And I was looking at it, I was like trying to figure out, you know, what sort of things you could do on it. And I was like, wow, you could probably do some really cool stuff on that. So I was, I was uh, thinking that my number five would be float. Mm -hmm. So that you wouldn't have to purchase the sex swing. You wouldn't have to um, take up a large portion of your house. And you wouldn't have to answer any weird questions whenever someone comes in to see you. <laughs> <laughs> so my number five is float. Let's say Rydia and Edge are making the beast with two backs. And Rydia is feeling a little bit extra horny that night and wants Edge to give her a facial. So just as he's about to pop, <laughs> she goes down on, onto his man meat to finish him off. Oh, man. She wants to make sure all of his cum gets on her face. <laughs> <laughs> so she casts slow on him and his member. So as the juice goes flying, she can make sure that she gets every drop. There's no misfires. Slow is my number four. Mine's the opposite. Haste. Uh, is that when she's like, hurry up and get over it? No, haste is for when, uh, you know, you go on a long vacation and you, you know, are abstaining from sexual activity and you come back to your spouse and you know it's only going to be like a minute it tops so you cast haste on her so she could hurry up and come before you do <laughs> <laughs> and you don't feel as bad <laughs> sitting at the edge of the bed all shameful i'm sorry <laughs> Um, I thought you were going to go the other way and cast haste on the man so when he finishes, he could hurry up and get a second win. Oh, that, that makes sense. <laughs> Your logic also makes sense. I feel like I should really put this one higher because safety is the most important thing. My number four is wall. <laughs> so in Final Fantasy, you use this spell whenever you fear your opponent's magical prowess and it blocks all the magical attacks. For sexual purposes, it could be used if you lack contraceptives, of course. 
The bad thing is that when the wall is used, the magical attacks bounce off of their intended target <laughs> and go back on their, onto the spellcaster, which would mean that Jizz would get all over it. <laughs> so after thinking about this, I'm going to go with heal instead of uh, wall. Um, maybe you could just use heal to nullify any sort of ill effects that you might have encountered during the sexual activity. So I'm going to recall wall heal, heal for my number four. I didn't think about that. You could also use nuke to kill the sperm. Oh, no, just... that'd be too powerful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go a little bit opposite of you, Nick. Oh, man. Let's say that you're in a seedy bar. <laughs> you come across a young white mage that, that has very little experience. You, a handsome, strapping, horny ninja, saddle up next to her for some lovin'. She plays coy at first, but you could tell she wants it. You talk her into betting with you. She says, wait, you do have protection, right? You say, hell no. <laughs> I like it, raw dog. She says, no, only if you have protection. So you abide by her request and let her use barrier on your penis. So you're going along, giving it to her good. When all of a sudden you remember... You're not going to put up with this. You mutter to yourself, Dispel! Dispel. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you release the barrier. No one tells you where you can or cannot come. <laughs> My number three was Dispel. I was thinking about doing something like that, but I never once used Dispel in Final Fantasy, <laughs> so I couldn't justify it. Have you ever used Dispel? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, number three on my list is numb. <laughs> <laughs> you got a trend going on here. <laughs> Just for those uh, instances where she's feeling a little frisky and wants it somewhere else where the sun doesn't oh. shine, <laughs> <laughs> but she doesn't like the way it feels. <laughs> Numb that ass. <laughs> That's it. Uh, uh, my number three spell works really well on Final Fantasy when you have a brutish type of warrior character who delivers a lot of physical damage but doesn't really do much else. Once the spell is used, you lose all control of the party member, but man, does he kick some ass. My number three is Berserk. <laughs> Try using Berserk before sex on yourself, and man, it's like being high on MDMA, or even better, some blue sky made by Heisenberg. <laughs> yes. You lose all control, all inhibitions, and you gain superpower and stamina. I fear for the life of any lady who has to deal with a mate who has had Berserk cast upon him. <laughs> so my number three is Berserk. He's got Berserk in his arsenal and numb. <laughs> All right, let's say Radia and Edge are doing the wild monkey dance. You really like Radia and Edge. I told you there's a theme. <laughs> <laughs> and Edge is feeling extra horny that night. Oh, man. And just as things are getting good, he's about to blow his load. <laughs> is Radia going to go to bed feeling unfulfilled? <laughs> no way. Just as he is about to blast off, Radia uses stop. <laughs> She could turn him on his back and ride him all night till the chocobos come home. <laughs> That's my number two. Stop. Uh, number two on my list is Berserk. Nice. Uh, that's, it's, you know, very rarely would I say to use it in the bedroom, but when she just keeps saying harder and you can't go any harder, <laughs> you'll show her harder with Berserk. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in Final Fantasy this spell is uh, generally cast by enemies onto your party it can be one of the most lethal spells if it's cast on the wrong character say a powerful mage or a mighty knight is, entr is entranced by this spell it's either confused or charmed depending on what game you're playing uh, I've never been into the whole bar scene but for those of you who are and have failed in courting the best looking lady in the room charm is the spell for you 
she will fall for you in spite of your man tits, pimply face, and a complete lack of personality. <laughs> the unfortunate thing is charm rarely ever works. The alternative is to cast blind on yourself and go ahead and settle for a lady who's a little more in your league. <laughs> when blind, it doesn't matter what she looks like. She's just another hole to poke around in. <laughs> so my number two is charm. But if charm fails, which it usually does in Final Fantasy, we'll go with blind. All right. So what happened? Edge spilled his load without satisfying Rydia. <laughs> what is a girl to do? So she's sitting there, looks to her right on her nightstand, sees a dildo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she starts to reach for it, but no. No one likes a cold dildo, right? <laughs> she turns to Edge and casts many. She uses Edge, whole body, as the dildo. Oh, oh man. <laughs> And orders him to make Hulk Hogan poses while he's inside of her. <laughs> My number one is mini. That's Step Brothers material right there. <laughs> uh, number one on my list goes to anyone who has ever had a creaky bed in their life with uh, kids in the next room <laughs> or an uncle with their cousin. <laughs> yeah. Did a little foreshadowing with silence, huh? Yeah. Nice. So, uh, silence is my number one. Just cast that on the room, and you could wail and squeak till the cocobos come home. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Brad took my number one, but for different reasons. I this really isn't my thing, but I hear it's a fetish. This spell may well have been cast on Wee Man or Beetlejuice. My number one spell is many, as I said. <laughs> <laughs> According to the Final Fantasy wiki page, this spell gives you a status element of midget. Some might consider, <laughs> <laughs> Some might consider that to be a bad thing, but there definitely is a place in the market for these little people. Have either, have either of you guys ever seen micro wrestling? Yes, God. with Hulk Hogan. It's so awesome. So my number one is mini. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. It's funny how both of you was mini. I know, for different reasons. And I was going to put mini on there um, for the whole stepbrothers thing, but I couldn't incorporate it into a tale like you did. <laughs> I was thinking also of um, using it on, on Titan, but just on his penis for Rydia because it would be too big. Mm. But uh, the Edge story was fit my theme. Doesn't Edge have a few spells? Like he has like a... a, a... A wave attack or whatever. Flood. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> I, um, I have a few honorable mentions because I couldn't just think of five. Oh, man, I had a hard time coming up with five. <laughs> One of them was water. <laughs> <laughs> Which didn't come until later in the series. Yeah. Um, they could con use the water to control the force of the water like a shower head. That could have made my list. Or <laughs> let's say Radio wants like multiple penises. Edge could have cast Blink. So then he's so fast, <laughs> he'd be hitting everything, and it'd feel as like it's there's three different people there. <laughs> I had sleep. Have you ever heard of the Sleep Creepers? No. Uh, I heard about it on this podcast where there's this website where people try to have sex with people that are sleeping. Oh, man. So Jeez. sleep would help with that. <laughs> probably. They'd probably take the enjoyment out of it, though. I think I would think that part of the pleasure of that is actually getting away with it. Yeah. Like making sure that they're still asleep. I guess so. I don't know. Float was also on my list for the same reason Nick had it, <laughs> except for not the sex swing, but to, to just position things. <laughs> um, <laughs> I left my paper at home that had more of them on there. <laughs> You never mentioned fire. We talked we about talked that about it last week. It was... um, fire was the one where actually Brandon invented it. When <laughs> you're walking, you're walking by someone's room and you hear wax, and, <laughs> and it's fire one getting cast on to singe all the pubic hairs. It'd be a lot less painful than a Brazilian wax. I don't know about that. I, I, I know about that. Oh, okay. So it... <laughs> getting wax sucked. It sucks. 
But so you've tried burning your hairs off? Yeah, if you put a lighter up to your arm, it doesn't okay. hurt. But how do you know it's not different from? I'm if sure you go down there. I'm sure it's not. I different. think you should test it out when you get home. Any dishonorable mentions? Uh, I'm sure meteor. <laughs> uh, Ultima. You, you got to think practical. <laughs> like I was thinking, um, like muddle would be one because of the whole rapey thing. Um, I was thinking sleep for the same reason. Until yeah. Browning had that weird fetish. That he, <laughs> weirdo. His honorable mention. <laughs> Asuna could cure a whole lot of things, but it still can't cure her herpes. Not even the <laughs> not even the ribbon could cure that. That's oh, it's wow. like uncurable. We should ask Nobuo Uematsu if what he thinks about that. We can. <laughs> I'm sure he has a tweeter. <clears throat> so Nick, do you have a jerk of the week? I think. Fuck stuff up. Oh man. Fucking assholes. Illegal scalping. Piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> So I heard you also had a jerk of the week. Oh, I have a cunt of a week. Oh, man. Oh, man. Um, today I was looking, and it kind of fits our theme, too. Cameron Diaz was uh, quoted in saying, everyone will be cheated on or will cheat on their significant other in their lifetime. That's what Oprah said, too. Did she really say that? She did. Oh, she's retarded. <laughs> they said, especially if your ring finger is longer than your index finger. What? what? Because that shows you have more testosterone and you're on the hunt. So I got home from work one day and Karen was like, let me see your hand. And I put it out and she was like, of course my ring finger has to be longer than my first finger. Yeah. She was like, oh, you're on the hunt. I was like, I'm not on no hunt. <laughs> Believe me, I'm no poacher. So yours was Cameron Diaz? Yep. She said that? Mm -hmm. okay. Of course she would. Where where did you see that on Twitter? Yahoo, oh, yeah. Yahoo News. Oh, okay. So up next, uh, next week, what we have is Brad's doing this uh, awesome game show for us. It's electrifying. Um, I forgot all about it until he reminded me. Don't forget, you're gonna get zapped. So that'll do it for episode 44 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. Nick. Melissa. Happy hunting. <laughs>